Welcome to Grassroot Diplomat Talks, the monthly podcast series produced by Grassroot Diplomat, discussing innovative practices of diplomacy for a modern world. I'm Talin Rahman Figueroa, the Executive Director of Grassroot Diplomat, and I will be your host today. I am joined by my Managing Director, Sandra Francius, to discuss the reasons why she first joined Grassroot Diplomat and just talk about her experiences. Sandra joined the organization roughly five years ago, starting with our events programs and now moving up to managing many of our programs. Sandra, welcome to Grassroot Diplomat Talks. Uh, thank you. So Sandra, it will be really great for our audience to know more about you and how you first started to work with Grassroot Diplomat. It was like five years ago. I just moved from France. I uh, had the opportunity to, to come here and um, I was a fresh student uh, completing my master degree already to get a job in international relations. As a French citizen, a French nas- national, I wanted to be a diplomat and I knew I couldn't be a diplomat in, uh, in the UK, but it wasn't a problem for me to find another job in international relations until I go back to France and be a diplomat. While looking for a job, I came across grassroots diplomat and by researching what the company was, I came across this I can't even explain. I just it just resonated. This was um the vision, the mission of Grassroot Diplomat uh, were exactly how I envisioned diplomacy because this opportunity was there. I was like I can't miss it and just applied. I'm very curious to know what was your original reason in wanting to be a diplomat before joining us. I think that we all have at one point this vision of diplomacy, this really glamorous vision of diplomacy. I have always been in love with languages, um, love traveling around. And I was like, I want a job where I can use my, my language skills. By looking around, I found out diplomacy and I was like, oh, yes, why not? I consider myself as an ongoing person and I love to mediate between people to make to help resolve issues and problems then I was like why not went into international relations studies and I kept my goal of being diplomat despite the challenges that I encountered throughout the years as in France they really tell you that it's an elite job not everybody can can be one so was it the fact that there was some sort of power this eliteness like you described to wanting to join diplomacy and once you did join diplomacy from the private sector how did this perception changed for you first of all i realized that diplomacy is not reserved to a certain category of people i think the private sector showed me that diplomacy is everywhere it's not really reserved to state matters to state organizations wherever it is then i realized that i can be a diplomat and i am a diplomat even being in the private sector and by you know meeting different people and actual diplomats in the public sector i realized that being a diplomat in the private sector is actually better for me and is actually closer to my personality so you mentioned being a diplomat in the private sector works better for you What does it actually mean to be a diplomat in the private sector as opposed to the public sector? That's a really good question. Being a diplomat in the private sector for me is beyond the state, is beyond representing the country. For example, grassroots diplomat is really about grassroots and is re- being representing the grassroots interest, the people interest to the state, to the governments, you know, whoever this government is. This is how I see diplomacy in the public sector is more than representing a country to another country, is representing the population to the government. Okay, so what do you think the differences are in working as a diplomat on the private sector versus the public sector for you, particularly from your point of view? Well, being a diplomat in the private sector is basically working for the organization I'm working at the moment. And grassroots diplomat showed me what a diplomat for the private sector is, which is really making sure that the diplomat in the public sector (laughs) does their job and have a social impact on the grassroots. And this is what I was attracted to grassroots before, is just because for me in diplomacy, is just focusing on the grassroots and the social impacts of what we call public diplomacy. Public diplomacy, it feels that sometimes it's stuck in its tradition, in its 
not necessarily prejudices, but more about um, what people think what diplomacy is. We all have our traditions and we need to follow that. And I think that in the private sector, you'll have more freedom to try new ways to use out-of-the-box technologies the public sector wouldn't think about because they just focus on the traditional way. Over the past few years, obviously, you've met quite a few diplomats and politicians um, working through some of our programmes. It would be really great for you to maybe share a story of someone that you met in the public sector that really inspired you and trying to implement some of the changes through the work of Grassroots Diplomat. The first person that actually that I think about right now is uh, Baroness Mayblood. I think she, she is the first uh, politician that I met. Uh, it was just a few months after I arrived here, a uh, few months after I joined Grassroots Diplomat and my first time entering the Houses of Parliament. And I remember this meeting in the afternoon. I didn't know there was a separate door for the House of Lords. Then I just went through the House of Commons. I had to ask my way around because I was completely lost and awed by by the place. Then yeah, then just going to the meeting and then meeting this really humble lady. She, obviously for me, as also a foreigner I'm like I'm meeting a baroness and at the same time she was Mm. like me she was working so hard on all her projects being on the ground and working so much to get awareness for her initiative it was very inspiring and also obviously you get uh, faith in, <laughs> in in humanity when you, you you know when you see so many people like her uh, doing their best to to have an impact on the ground and making sure that the people voices are heard at her level and how was your experience working with the diplomats so far considering that you are now working on the outside I'm happy I'm not a diplomat (laughs) in the public sector. Although I do appreciate and I'm still, well, I'm still seeing being a diplomat in in the public sector a very nice position. By meeting them, discussing with them, I realised that it is not for me. I met so many different ambassadors, ambassadors being very, very motivated, uh, passionate about their job uh, on different areas uh, obviously and others who were just Mm. there and just happy being an ambassador just happy about the title but there was nothing concrete to Mm. back that up many different personalities uh, that showed me that yeah the public sector can be quite close compared to the private sector. We have been lucky to meet so many passionate ambassadors who you can't interrupt doing interviews because they're so (laughs) into their subject. The first person that that comes into mind is the Mexican ambassador, for example, working so hard to fight against the prejudices uh, his country has. And it was very inspiring as well to see the work and working so closely with his team as well to make that happen. When I went to meet him, he has this charisma that I didn't expect. He captured your attention, I guess, through the exactly. way he was composed. His pose, is the, the way he speaks, just the way he was seated in front of me, mm. the way he welcomed me. For example, I arrived a bit early um, and his team already was like, oh, do you want something to drink? Uh, can we help? I'm sorry, we're a bit late. Actually, then just have a seat. And then when he showed up, he was like, before we start, I want to offer you and Tallinn and this book. And it was a book about all their achievements of the previous year. And it was such a nice touch. There was just a simple card thank you, say thank you. And then he showed me in. I could see that he was listening, which seems obvious. You're like, obviously, people will listen to you when you speak. But there are different ways of listening. And with the Mexican ambassador, everything was like, oh, I'm with you now you're there I'm here for you so he was able to show that his attention was 100% with you as opposed to just 50 or maybe 30% exactly so you feel that that's quite important I mean I find that in diplomacy rapport is so important and unfortunately many of the diplomats that I've worked with in the past many of them fail to do that adequately that they do it well but not as well as I expect them to to behave especially in networking opportunities so when you do have an opportunity 
opportunity to meet an ambassador. I mean, of course, it's very important that the meeting is mutually beneficial. Both parties get something out of it and there is a very strong relationship that comes out of the engagement from the very beginning. And I think um, one of the challenges that maybe us and other private sector organisations have is the fact that we have very limited time and we really only get one chance to, I guess, wow them. We only have yes. one chance to really impress them because if we screw up this one time, then we won't get the opportunity again. Yes, in- indeed. And I think that after this meeting is the the ones that I remember the most. I realized that soft skills, like the one he just used on me that day with, without knowing most, most likely, is what is important in diplomacy, is relationship building. I wonder why, I wonder the reason if the Mexican ambassador had such a hold on you was probably because his background was in journalism, which quite a lot mm. of people may or may not know. So as you can imagine, being a journalist, you're Of course, your focus is to get the information that you want, but also, again, to hold people's attention. So just as a career diplomat, so they've been doing that job for a very long time without having had any other former experience in. It's something that I see quite often, whereby the diplomats that I do meet, many of them just don't know how to communicate or they don't know how to get the message out effectively. I do agree. You could definitely see a difference between an ambassador who has been in the foreign affairs since the beginning and others who actually built their career in the private sector before moving to the public sector as an ambassador. If you could give advice to young people or young diplomats who are listening to this podcast, what would it be in terms of how to be more effective? One advice, don't focus too much on your studies. Focus on your soft skills because knowledge that you learn, all the theories that you learn at uni are important but not that much. Practice over theory. Maybe that's that's, exactly. that's what the main takeaway here is. Well, Sandra, thank you very much for joining us on this special podcast. Well, thank you for having me. You have been listening to Grassroot Diplomat Talks. Join us again next month to discuss the practices of diplomacy. For further information, please visit www.grassrootdiplomat.org. I'm Tarleen Raman Figueroa. And I'm Sandra Francis. And we look forward to hearing from you.